In this example, we have a motor. A motor on a 120 volt circuit. The resistance of that motor is 5.00 ohms. And the question is, if at full speed, it draws a current of 2.40 amps, part, um, well, what does that mean? Why would it draw a different current when it's not at full speed? It's going to draw a different current when it's not at full speed. You don't have like the clock. Back, back, back. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, back EMF. You don't have the back EMF. What causes the back EMF in a motor? Okay. The spinning of the motor causes an EMF, a current that is opposite the direction of the current going through the motor. Therefore, it has something called a back EMF. So part A, the question is, what is the back EMF? And usually we symbolize that like this. Part B, what is the current at the start? And part C, what is the power at the start, the ratio of the power when it starts up and the power when it is run? So we have a battery. We're going to illustrate the motor as such. The motor has an internal, has an internal resistance. I'll just illustrate it that way. And M for the motor of, in the circuit right there. Yeah, scary. C, C, what is the power at the start over the power when it's running? I want to know the ratio of the initial power to the power when it's actually running at full speed. So we have our circuit. We have some sort of power supply running uh, current through the circuit. We have the resistance and the motor itself. So the electric potential difference around the loop is going to be equal to Loki. Zero. Zero. Keep going. Uh, sure. To the right from the curve. It's going to go this way. Okay. Uh, potential difference at uh, resistor. Uh, resistor. Which, okay, so the electric potential difference to the resistor. Be negative. Keep going around. Uh, what about the motor? Uh, EMF. Now this is when it's at full speed because we're trying to figure out the back EMF. So the potential difference around the loop is at full speed. Yeah. That's okay. Nifish. So far, we've gone through the resistor. We know we have the negative potential difference across the resistor. What about the motor? You yeah, lose potential difference across the resistor. What's that called? Uh, delta V sub M. Uh, nope. Uh, Nick? The back EMF. We've already figured out that the current in the motor is going to be opposite, or the induced current in the motor is going to be opposite the direction of the um, current supplied to the motor. Therefore, the back EMF, we're going to have a positive or a negative here. Manage. Um, positive. It was a 50-50 chance, God. unfortunately. <laughs> The back EMF, remember, it's opposite the direction of the current going into, from the battery, going into the motor, so it's going to be negative. And then we have the positive potential difference across the battery. So we have then zero is equal to negative current times resistance minus the back EMF plus the electric potential difference across the battery. So the back EMF is going to be equal to the potential difference across the battery minus the current times the resistance. So 120 minus the current, which was 2.4 times the resistance, which is 5. 
the back EMF. across the circuit is 120 volts. But when we get current running through the motor and the motor gets up to speed, it turns out that there is a back EMF in the motor of 108 volts. That means that the electric potential difference across the motor is actually 120 minus 100, 108 or 12 volts because of the back EMF in the motor itself. OK, what about part B, the current at the very beginning? So the loop. We still have electric potential shifts across our loop, but what is different now at the very beginning? Okay. Sure. At the very beginning, and when we start, the electric potential shifts across the loop is going to be slightly different. How is it going to be different? Yeah. Who can answer this question? John? There's no bag in here. Why not? Um, because like, there's no like induced okay. The motor is not turning at the very beginning. So in the absence of a turning motor, we don't have a change in the magnetic flux in the motor, and therefore we don't have a back EMF. So at the beginning, the motor is not running. So there is no back EMF. So the electric potential difference around the loop is equal to zero, which is equal to the negative electric potential difference across the resistor. Uh, we'll just add the whole thing and then we'll cross it off just to make it clear, plus the electric potential difference across the battery. So the electric potential difference across the battery is equal to the electric potential difference across the resistor, or equals current times resistance. So the current is equal to the electric potential difference divided by the resistance, 120 divided by 5. The current at the start. Okay. 120 divided by 5? 24. It's 24 amps. Okay. Now, I want the ratio of the power at the very beginning divided by the power when it is running. We have several different equations for power, electric power. Please, Zach, give me all three. Power equals current times electric current difference. Current squared times resistance. Good current squared times resistance and. Good, electric potential difference squared divided by the resistance. We just figured out the current, we have the resistance, so we'll use the current. Current at the start squared multiplied by the resistance of the motor divided by the current when it's running squared multiplied by the resistance of the motor. Resistance of the motor is irrelevant, so we have the current at the start, which is 24 squared divided by the current when it's running, which is 2.4 squared, and we get the ratio is equal to start this motor, it is actually consuming 100 times as many joules per second as it's designed to when it's running. Do you remember, when you turn on a table saw in your house, what happens to the lights? They dim. Because right at the beginning, at the very beginning, it's drawing more power than it's supposed to. Same thing happens if suddenly that motor stops. That's why you can blow a fuse or break a uh, trip the circuit breaker if you get something stuck in a motor and the motor suddenly stops. Good. 